Look at that, look at that. He's, tr he's trying to pathfind yeah, somewhere, but he moves. He can't get there. <laughs> Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, we'll be looking at all the tips and tricks that you can do in the latest 1.16 snapshot. This will be a continuation of the snapshot review video. So if you haven't seen that one already, it's linked below and that will go over the majority of the basics, which is new to the snapshot. We just finished a seven hour live stream of us playing around on the snapshot server with you guys, the viewers. And if you missed out, we do them every Wednesday and Friday. So make sure you subscribe as well as turn your notifications to get informed about those. I have to say this was a really crazy experience. We came across a lot of weird stuff which I put into this nice little video for you guys. So make sure to like the video as well as share with other Minecrafters so they can learn about all these cool tricks which are coming out very soon. So we've just been doing a bunch of bartering with the piglins and we got a Soul Speed 3 book from them. Uh, they're also dropping iron boots that are enchanted, people are saying, with Soul Speed. So these are some of the type of boots that you can get from the piglins. Um, they are iron. They have Soul Speed, either one through three I think somebody said they got three and they will randomly uh, drop these as well or barter for them and you can see the majority of the time the piglins pick them back up again and wear them what the heck is with that you use your hard-earned gold and then they just turn around and use it <laughs> to give themselves their own gear upgrades I don't know if that's intended so here's another right hoe here and then there's also a chance of getting um, enchanted or enchanted book right here, enchanted book. Then there's also there's a weight of five for getting iron boots, so about half the probability of getting a fire resistant potion you can get iron boots. And then getting the enchanted book all by itself is the same as a hoe, so extremely rare. So loot insert here 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 loot loot. Minecraft gameplay piglin bartering. Huh. So you take the loot and you can directly put it into this chest. Oh, that is really cool. So you can use a command to kind of check it out. So you summon a piglin with crossbow with low durability. Should break it. Yep, you broke it. Okay. Now, what they changed in this version is they can actually use bows. So we can give him a bow. Let's give him one of our good bows. Here, have that. Huh. Can he actually shoot it? Oh, he doesn't. What happens if we let him go up to it? Oh, he he, he punches with his bow in his hand. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So you find the gold ore between Y level 128 all the way down to Y level 10. So you can actually find it way up in the bedrock, similar to quartz. Cheater codes looked into the game uh, code and found location for it. It's also a bit less. So instead of having like packs of 14, which quartz can have, it can only go up to veins as high as 10. It's also about 30% more rare than quartz. So you won't find it as abundant. But definitely useful to go here if you need to get gold, uh, especially since you can smelt this down and trade with the piglins. You could do quite a bit in this dimension just with the gold alone. And of course UHC, you could definitely come here in the nether and get a lot of gold quite easily because you can see it on the huge amount of surface area that there is in the nether dimension. Okay, so you can't use a wooden pickaxe. You can't use a stone either. But you can use the iron and above to mine gold. Very similar to gold like in the old world. So let's see which one is more blast resistant. So we got gold ore over here and Another gold ore over there. Let's summon TNT. Okay, I made that kind of hole in it. Let's try that over here. You think this would be more weaker? Hmm. Yeah, I did make a slightly bigger hole. Summon. Yeah, another rack you can make really big holes in. It. So it's kind of in between the two. I'd say it's definitely more closer to normal gold ore. So we're putting eight layers of snow and see if any mobs will spawn here once. Make it peaceful. Make it hard again. Nope, mobs. Oh, well, I guess I can. <gasps> they change it. So mobs can now spawn on top of eight layers of snow. Oh, that's something they changed. Okay, so they could do on top of soul sand, also eight layers of snow. Let's try seven layers of snow. Mobs use a spawn in seven layers of snow. Okay, so they don't spawn in seven layers. So we can push them. You can also push them with slime, and then they take off. They don't go that far. Must be the default. I wonder what would happen if we push the ones on prototype because I know they I think they just keep flying until they hit something So these are a little bit different than the ones they actually get from withers 
it will be kind of fun to do some experiments uh, with them once we update our project survival server. Shove it over here to this one. <laughs> Shove it back over there. <laughs> nice. Oh, it blew up. <laughs> Someone touches the block, it blows up. Nice. That's pretty cool. We've had quite a few ones on our projects that blew up. Like I think you can pretty much the same thing we did uh, here, move them around. So we just built up a quick zero tick twisted vine um, farm. So we got vines growing up out of this. So if we remove this top piece, you can see that it gets updated very quickly. Completely grow into a new whole section. So you can zero tick the new twisted vines. Uh, let's see if we can actually break this off as an item. We just put a piston onto this piece, which is also getting powered. And it's every so often the vine's able to grow past this piston and uh, break it off. And you see it does drop the item when it's broken by piston. So you can make a farm using this. We went ahead and actually built a little farm using this. Uh, we just got a piston that pushes pieces over here. We got a hopper, picks them up. So yeah, you can make a farm out of this. A zero tick farm. Or you can also make like a manual farm too with pistons, the flying machine. I guess it could be very similar to like my weeping vine farm. But that's pretty cool. I wonder if it could be used for a fuel source. So it looks like they cannot be used as fuel. Okay, we're gonna have a competition. See how fast this thing can reach the top of the world. Uh, yeah, let's see who can get to the top. I'm already there. <laughs> 255, so at the top of the world. Can't go any higher than this. Okay, I got a weeping vine up here. I'm gonna put me all the way down to the bottom. That is crazy. <laughs> and then these are really nice because at any point you can like climb this. So let's say I'm climbing this, I go up or let's see, can I also go down? They just naturally go down, okay. And then at any point you want to, you can place in a block. So you can hold shift on the edge, then place a block below Dude. you. There, and then you can kind of use that to scaffold off of go other places. It doesn't interrupt the vines. I think the vines are still here. And you can do the same thing uh, with the twisted vines. And then you can click like above you or below you and place in a block and then work off of that. Pretty cool. A lot better than scaffolding. <laughs> So we're up here quite high. We're gonna try to fall and place a vine at the same time. Kind of similar to like water and see if we don't die. Uh, let's try it. Nope. So let's make um, two tall and let's drop on top of them in survival. Yeah, so two tall saved me. So if you're really fast spam clicking, you can place two vines and prevent yourself from dying from a fall. But I use a super fast uh, mouse. Back in the day, I used to use cobwebs. Um, when I would work like way up in the air before elytras were out, I would place cobwebs on the ground and then if I ever fall, I would aim for the cobwebs and uh, land in them. But yeah, they also work. So just like the weeping vines, uh, neither vines actually burn. You can't like place fire on the side of them or anything. So yeah, they are like nether proof. Very cool to see that. The question is, can they be planted in lava? They can, but they get destroyed by just the fluids. I wonder if fluids will also um, like make them drop their items. So you break into survival, just one click instant break. Well, I guess sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't drop. Let's break this and see if it drops any items. Yes, okay, so water can also harvest them. So will shears make 100% drop? No, they still sometimes don't drop. Uh, the question is, are we limited to how high these vines can go? So I'm just gonna uh, bone mill this one. It's the very bottom of the world. And let's go to the very, very top and see how far this thing went. I um, made a my, nice little hole guess, for it. My guess, no, it does not matter. Yeah, it literally looks like it went all the way from the very bottom of the world to the very top of the world. No problem. You guys want to see if they will work with ender pearls? Like, will they hit up against it? Yes. Ender pearls hit against it. Snowballs hit That's against it. That's kind of useful. Arrows go right through it. I think this is just a. Yeah, this is just a ghost. I fire. mean, yeah, you have a thirty per uh, a one third chance to get the item. Oh really? Is that for both but type of vines? For the weeping vines. Weeping and probably twisted. I haven't checked the twisted yet. Twisting vines. Yeah, same. Uh, but fortune should work. Oh, fortune works. So we got three vines there. Let's break one. 
Oh wow, fortune, yeah, we get extra vines. Okay, I guess for, they still can have a chance of failing. But when they yeah. do drop, then you can get extra. Huh, so you can just like keep placing these, just keep breaking with fortune, you can get more of them. You wouldn't even need like a farm. Is there anything like that in the game? Here, we'll do a whole bunch of them. We'll see if we gain or lose. Um, are we losing? Oh, we're staying around even, so it must be the same percentage. Yeah, it looks like we're not really gaining or losing. <laughs> that's kind of cool. You can actually hold down both right and left click. It's one of the few times that actually works. Okay, so I guess that's not a way to get more vines. So anything with a solid top block, like a trap door, you should be able to put a vine on top of it. And you should also be able to bone mill it. But if you would update this, then it's going to break off. Very similar to like the weeping vines. Yeah. You can even open it. That's funny. We put it sideways. Oh, okay. It pops off when you close it. So next up, we're testing the new Soul Speed 3 enchantment on boots and seeing how well it actually works. So can we put Feather Falling 4 on it? Yes. Uh, can Depth Strider be put with the Soul one? Soul Speed, yes. Gonna, so you can have Soul Speed plus Depth Strider. That should be pretty fast. So yeah, you can't put Depth Strider with Frostwalker. But you can put the new Soul Speed pretty much on any um, boot with whatever enchantment it has. Ready? Three, two, one, go! So it looks like it's the same, no matter if... Pretty close, yeah. Yeah, it don't matter if you have Probably Blue Eyes underneath or Soul Sand. Pretty much the same speed. Next up, we test Soul Sand versus Normal Blocks. You wanna go, Dino? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not sprinting. Yeah, you do walk faster. You can make slightly faster speedways than walking on normal blocks, but it seems like ice is still faster. Of course, boats and ice would be faster. So the speed effect from the soul speed enchantment applies both to soul sand as well as soul soil. You can see if I hop between the two of these, it's the same speed. Yeah, we have Soul Speed, a Death Strider 3, Soul Speed 3, we got Soul Sand on the bottom of it, 2 high of water. And then if we swim, we get Dolphin's Grace. And then whenever we push forward, we go extremely fast. And yeah, pretty much takes all the way to the opposite side very quickly. But it seems like you only get Dolphin's Grace when you're in swim mode and you're so close to the dolphin. Otherwise, once you get it, you can go extremely fast. Swimming's also fast. You can't get this stuff from the chanting oh, because table. you only get it from pottering, yeah. Yeah, right. so you most likely can't get this from mob drops. You only have to get it from bartering and then putting it on your armor. So now I have speed 2, plus I'm going to get Dolphin's Grace. With having the extra speed 2, it looks like it does help. You can either swim or just walk. It's quite fast. No depth trainer. No depth trainer. I, I know, right? I, I noticed earlier oh, that you wow. can't use Death Strider. Oh wow, that I know. Really fast. Wait, how does... For some reason, Death Strider does not let it work. And I think it has something to do with the acceleration of um, the player on water and soul sand and how it differs. I think there's probably some math area, error where it accelerates you forward instead of backwards. And it just kind of eats you really quickly. Yeah, it keeps going faster, Here faster, 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 faster. Okay, we got big brain idea. Make a new world. That is super flat, customize top layer in water, and one underneath of it being soul soil. Oh, look at that, guys. It's gonna be infinite. Okay, let's create this world. This is gonna be insane. Oh, what? what? Yeah, so it's the most already. bizarre spawn ever. I guess I could turn off structures. Now we need to get ourselves the boots. We need soul three. Also need unbreaking three. Push forward a little bit. I just tapped, barely tapped forward. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I literally lagged out so bad that I couldn't move forward. The game, oh, the game can't generate chunks fast enough and it stops you. That is crazy. Yeah, 
Yeah, it seems like as soon as I reach ungenerated chunks, it just stops it. Give myself Dolphin's Grace. So normally you get Dolphin's Grace one in survival, so I'm gonna do that for a long period of time. Oh my goodness, yeah. That really speeds it up. It goes so fast the world cannot generate. That would definitely crash your servers. Matter no time I'd reach 200 blocks. Oh, yeah, dude, I can even go sideways. I can even go backwards. I guess with the chunks are already generated. Does that help? Still going to unload the chunks. Depth Strider actually slowed us down. Speed might make it faster, but we're really limited just once the chunks don't load, it doesn't work. So we got ourselves a drowned. So have soul speed boots. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Probably has to frost one. Look at that, look at that. He's, tr he's trying to pathfind somewhere, but he moves. He can't get there. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna push this friction. <laughs> he wants to go over there. Oh my goodness. Wow, it works. There he is right there. Here, let's spectate him. That way we don't lose him. <laughs> Try. So he just starts going one direction. He goes faster, 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 <laughs> until he hits a wall. And then he's just like, oh, try going down our way. Whenever he starts walking, it just goes so fast you can't change it. <laughs> oh, that is so hilarious. The giants are so funny to watch. <laughs> what? You can easily see the giants when they move around. So you have the boots on an armor stand, pushing it with slime, and then it just accelerates all the way to the other side. Yeah. That'd be a good way to like load something that's pretty far away, without oh, yeah. actually having to use redstone dust or other redstone methods. As long as it's empty processing. And you can send them right through each other, I guess, too. You can also send it diagonally, too, I bet, if you can somehow figure out how to push them oh, that way. Right. Now, when it comes to redstone changes, I know a lot of people were afraid of them removing some of the main components that we use day to day that aren't necessarily working as they were intended. Now, one of the Mojang developers, Sly Slime, actually came out with a message saying that they aren't actually going to remove anything like zero ticking or like quasi connectivity. Uh, what he's just trying to say with that earlier message is that they are going to try to fix some bugs in the redstone kind of category. And when they fix stuff, they will accidentally change other stuff. So anything that may seem to be broken or changed, they didn't do it intentionally. They're just trying to fix some underlining problems with redstone. So they're pretty much saying don't get too worked up over it and kind of take each change one by one. So hopefully that will answer some of the questions you guys had about the redstone reworking. Oh, and those crazy flying machines you see in the distance? Yeah, that'll be in a future video. So we want to test to see what happens if you take one of these uh, piglins that are riding baby hoglins and you put them in the overworld and they convert over into a zombified piglin. Do they stay on top of the baby pig or do they um, get kicked off of it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in with end portal frames and then they're going to be taken to the overworld. Wait, do they not get teleported? I guess they really don't get teleported normally. They only have, have a little brief moment to actually write them. Okay, so some of them are writing. Let's release them. Oh, it looks like it just got kicked off. So some of you guys asked in the comments, is it possible to kind of break down the new netherite armor or gear to get the ingots or the scraps? You can't smelt down any of the netherite hose or any of the netherite tools at all. So you can't actually convert this back into a netherite ingot. I had a lot of fun testing around the newest Snapchat with you guys. And just messing around, seeing what new kind of type of farms we can make, what kind of new kind of games and fun stuff we can do with the newest changes to the snapshot. If you guys have any more questions, make sure you ask them down in the comments and hopefully I'll answer them there or maybe answer them in a future video. And don't forget to guys, go ahead and subscribe as well as like the video. I really enjoy doing these snapshots with you guys. And if you'd like to take part in one of these, we do them every Wednesday and, and I'll notify you guys of when the stream starts via like my YouTube notifications, Twitter notifications, Twitch, as well as on the Project Community Discord. So make sure you guys follow me there. That way you guys don't miss out on all the fun we have here. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.